Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. If you're a subscriber to a YouTube channel, you've probably noticed by now that we have two different Focus ST project cars. Our wet ST so far has a cold air intake, exhaust, and a downpipe to bump up the horsepower. With the boost it's making and the horsepower level it's at, it's way past the efficiency of the stock intercooler. So today we're going to move our factory intercooler and replace it with this intercooler kit from Cobb Tuning. Since we all know a cooler inlet charge is going to equal more horsepower for our Focus ST, the Cobb intercooler kit starts with this large intercooler core with these cast end tanks. They give you this optional decal if you did want to spray the Cobb name on the tank, but you don't have to. This is why we called it an intercooler kit. Instead of simply replacing the front and intercooler and leaving all the stock charge pipes, Cobb includes these 2.5 inch mandrel bent charge pipes that are going to increase flow to our turbo as well as our intercooler. Like all of their kits, Cobb includes everything needed for the installation and then some. High quality band clamps, all new silicon hoses, necessary hardware, an emblem, and even the correct drill bits for installation. For this installation, we need a lift or a jack and jack stands, drill, 3 8 ratchet, quarter inch ratchet, 13 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket, 7 millimeter socket, T30 Torx bit, 4 millimeter Allen key, a couple extensions, 13 millimeter wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, 8 millimeter wrench, 7 millimeter wrench, flathead screwdriver, marker, and safety glasses. To begin the installation, we need to remove several components off the front of our car to get to our factory intercooler. We're going to start by removing both wheels, driver's side fender liner, both headlights, as well as the front bumper. Now we'll remove the screws that hold the under tray in place. Once you remove the belly pan, you remove the bolts that hold the splash pan on. We're going to remove the driver's side fender liner, so we're going to work on removing the bumper. Start with these three plastic clips back here. Use a small screwdriver or a panel removal tool. Basically, you pull out the center piece and the rest of the clip will come out. The fender liner is still held in place by T30 Torx bits, located pretty much all over the place underneath. To remove all those, you can remove the fender liner. Now we're going to remove the fender liner. On the passenger side, you don't have to remove the entire fender liner, but you do have to separate it from the bumper to make it easier to get it off. Start with this screw here and the two underneath. The next step is to remove the head ledge, which is held in by two torque screws, one here and one here. You want to have a flathead screwdriver handy to get the headlight clip off once the headlight's removed. Just pop that out to remove the headlight harness. Repeat the process on the passenger side headlight. Now we'll start removing the hardware that holds the bumper on. There's one of these torque screws on either side. You need to remove these four plastic connectors of the same style that was found in the wheel well. And we'll carefully disconnect the hood latch. There's two 10 millimeter fasteners where my thumb and finger are located. You want to loosen them up. You don't have to remove them. Just get them loose, then the plastic tab will pop out so we can remove the bumper. Repeat the process on the passenger side. Before you start removing the bumper, pop these clips up on both sides. Let's give it a little tug to make sure that's clear before you try to remove it. Last step is just two plastic clips above those bolts you just loosened. I'm gonna pop those out as well. Now we can carefully remove our bumper cover. Like 
disconnect your fog light harness. I'll remove the clips here, just pulling these and slide off our upper grill. Next, remove the two T30 Torx screws holding the lower shroud in place. You squeeze the clips and this will just pop right off. Now we're going to work on removing the charge pipe in the factory intercooler. The first thing to do though is disconnect this harness here. This is for the factory shutter system. The lower charge pipe is held on in two locations by a 10 millimeter bolt in the front and a 13 millimeter nut in the rear. Now we'll start with the clamp at the front of the charge pipe on the intercooler. It's loose and they'll move to the rear. I'm going to disconnect the other end of the charge pipe at the turbo. Now we can remove the charge pipe. Start with the front here. Next, remove the charge pipe from the intercooler going up to the intake. The other end of the charge pipe is right up here next to your oil filter. It's kind of a tight spot. A small ratcheting wrench will definitely help. Let's get it loose. You can pull it down and disconnect from the other side of the intercooler. Now you want to disconnect the map sensor before you try to remove the intercooler. The intercooler is held to the bracket by two 8 millimeter bolts, one on this side and one on this side. Again, a small wrench would be a lot easier to get in here than a full size socket. Now we can slide it outward and remove it. The factory shutter system cannot be used with a cob intake, so we're going to remove that and put it aside next. You kind of have to sort of shimmy this to get it out. It's hanging downward on four clips. That's it for the disassembly process. Now we can begin the installation of our cob intercooler. Now we're gonna start drilling the holes to mount. There's two holes that have to be drilled to mount your cob intercooler. They're basically gonna go in these holes here, one on this side and the other one over on this side here. If you get lucky, there may be a nice dimple in here to go off of and drill. If you do have the dimple, drill right into it. In case of our 13, the back is completely smooth, so we're just gonna to have to line it up and drill a hole through it. You wanna take your time with this part, this is a bumper bar, it's a crash part, so obviously it's very strong. Drilling through it is gonna take some time. Don't rush it, they give you good quality bits. Use a good drill and take your time and make a good quality hole. We got the pilot hole through. Cobb actually supplies both drill bits needed. If you have a step bit like we're using here, it's actually gonna be a lot easier, so we're gonna use this to drill our hole open to the proper 15, 30 seconds. Once you get the first hole drilled, you want to hold up your intercooler and then mock up the hole for the second side. Mark that and then drill that side as well. Get it placed. We're going to get a rough idea where it's going to be. Now have to eyeball up that hole and drill the second hole on this side. Once you have both holes drilled into the bumper support, you're ready to actually mount your intercooler. When you watch this video, this part's not gonna look as hard as it really is. I've been doing this a long time. These are probably some of the hardest holes I've ever had to drill. You're gonna give yourself a good 45 minutes to even an hour to get these holes done, ready, and you can mount your intercooler. I can rest it on the lower radiator support and start putting it into place. Once you get all the hardware started, we can tighten it down. You want to remove the map sensor from the old intercooler and we're going to install it on our new cob.
We're going to remove the reducing pipe and silicone hose off the stock throttle body so we can replace it with a cob supplied piece. There's two clamps. The bottom one you can reach from the bottom, but the one for the coupler on the throttle body, it's a little easier to get to it from the top. Now we'll use the Cobb two and a half inch straight coupler and put it on the factory throttle body. Now we'll put a clamp on it and tighten it down to the top. Now we'll install the two silicone couplers on the sides of the intercooler. The shorter sides are going to go towards the inside, so the Cobb will be on the outside. You don't want to tighten the clamps down all the way, just tighten them down so they're not completely loose, but you still want to leave them loose enough that they'll move around. The new charge pipes can come off the side of the intercooler up to our throttle body. The problem is it won't fit up between the radiator support and the compressor with the angle it has to go. So what you need to do is disconnect the radiator support from the frame rail up here, drop it down just enough to get the charge pipe in place. If you get lucky at this point, your radiator support will drop down. In our case, we can see it's not moving yet because we have a little silver rivet holding it in place. Some cars have this rivet, not all of them do. If you do have the rivet, you have to drill it out to drop the radiator support. Now that it's unbolted, we'll push this rubber grommet up through, and that'll give us a little more room to work with. I'm going to put another clamp up on the throttle body silicone hose before we put the charge pipe in place. Make sure it's tight enough that it stays up there. Do the same thing on the intercooler side. Make sure we leave it somewhere where we can get to it easily and tighten it up. And we can start installing our charge pipe. Now we'll tighten up all the clamps. Okay, now we can move on to the driver's side. Before we work on the driver's side though, make sure you reinstall your radiator support. If your car had a rivet and you removed it, don't worry about reinstalling a new rivet, it really isn't necessary. Grab the reducer elbow with a loosely installed clamp and put it onto the turbo. Now we'll install the last two clamps again, just put them on the pipe loosely, and we'll put them all the way. Put one on the intercooler here and the other one on the turbo. Now we can start fitting the charge pipe. We use the supplied hardware to tighten up to the block. We'll use the factory hardware to connect the other bracket. Now we'll tighten down all the clamps. The installation of our Cobb front mount intercooler is now complete. You want to make sure since we can't reuse the shutter system, you'll want to tie this out of the way with the supplied zip ties and you can reinstall your front bumper. You can reinstall the bumper support. When reinstalling your front bumper, make sure you don't forget to plug in the fog lights. Reinstall the clips at the top of the radiator support. 
Reinstall the T30 Torx screws on the sides. I'll reconnect the hood release. Reinstall the headlight, don't forget to plug it in. Don't forget to tighten up the bolts that we loosened to get the bumper cover separated from the fender. Reinstall the small clip that holds the fender to the bumper cover. Splash shield up into place. Reinstall the wheels and our installation is finished. Given our success with other cop tuning products, we have no doubt the intercooler kits can do a great job keeping the inlet temperatures down in our focus, allowing us to make more horsepower. The installation is pretty straightforward, but drilling the bumper can be a chore, so give yourself about three to four hours for the installation. We'll be back on the road in no time.